Hi guys, welcome again to our Micro C Pro for Peak Tutorials for Absolute Beginner series. This is tutorial 79, web-based control and monitoring with a peak microcontroller. In this project, we are going to learn how to control any device connected to a peak microcontroller, like an LED, a relay, or even reading sensors connected to a peak microcontroller from a remote location using a web browser. An operator can use a PC, a tablet, or even a cell phone to control or read the status from a remote location. Using a router between our microcontroller connected to the internet and a router between our PC also connected to internet, these devices can be controlled anywhere in the world in real time. Controlling a microcontroller using a web browser is the easiest and reliable method of establishing connectivity and above all, there is no need to develop any special graphical user interface software for the PC or the cell phone for that matter as all modern operating systems already have a built-in web browser and one can also be downloaded for free on the internet like Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, or Mozilla Firefox. All you really need to do is to enter the server URL. In this case, the server will be the microcontroller and the PC will be the client. The URL is basically the IP address of the device you want to connect to. Assuming the server URL is 192.168.0.5, then by entering HTTP 192.168.0.5, dot one six eight dot zero dot five then enter this could establish the link between the microcontroller and the PC at the moment because you are not connecting to the microcontroller that's why it's unable to connect the HTTP which stands for hypertext transfer protocol provide a standard for web browsers and servers to communicate and transfer data there are microcontrollers with built-in Ethernet peripherals like the PIC 18F97J60. This PIC has an integrated 10 megabit per second Ethernet communication peripheral. These are some of its features. It got an integrated MAC address. It's fully compatible with 1001 gig based T networks and is also compatible with the IEEE 802.3 standard. But the problem, many microcontrollers don't have a built-in Ethernet controller. That's why in this project, we are going to use a serial Ethernet chip that can be easily used by any microcontroller with an SPI interface to provide Ethernet capability to this application. We are going to use the ENC28J60. This is a popular 28-pin standalone Ethernet controller with SPI interface. These are some of the features of this Ethernet controller. It's compatible with the IEEE 802.3 standard, fully compatible with 1001 gig based T networks. It support full and half duplex mode. The SPI interface with clock speed up to 20 MHz. Its operating voltage is 3.1 volt to 3.6 volt, and it's got some 5 volt tolerance input. We have learned more about this chip in the previous tutorial, so we're not going to go through everything, but you can go through this data sheet to learn more about this chip. In this project, we're going to design a microcontroller-based automation system using the Ethernet as the communication medium. Two relays connected to our peak microcontroller will be controlled from a web browser. In this part one, we're going to design our circuit diagram. We're going to use the PIC 18F45K22, but any PIC with SPI interface and more than 4 kilobytes of ROM memory can be used. going to need the Ethernet controller ENC28J60. going to need two relays. going to need the motor. going to need the light bulb. I need two transistors to control our relay. 
we're gonna use the BC108 the NPA low power bipolar transistor but any similar transistor can also be used gonna need some crystal gonna need some LEDs gonna need two diodes okay let's start with our peak microcontroller gonna start with the reset circuit need the push button plus 5 volt to ground this will be connected to our MCLR pin gonna do the same okay so whenever this reset button is pressed our microcontroller will be reset let us connect our crystal oscillator circuit gonna use 8 megahertz external oscillator and this will be connected to oscillator 2 pin and this pin will be connected to oscillator 1 pin let us connect our relays we're gonna connect our relays to rd0 and rd1 as we have learned from the interfacing a relay with a peak microcontroller we cannot connect a relay directly to a peak microcontroller pin because a relay draws more current than a peak pin will be able to supply so we're gonna drive our relays with transistors plus 5 volt this is gonna be a 5 volt relay to connect our second relay let us connect our ethernet controller chip this chip will operate a 25 megahertz we're gonna need a 25 megahertz crystal the interface between the microcontroller and the ethernet chip is based on SPI bus the ethernet chip SI SO chip select and SCK pins will be connected to SPI pins of the microcontroller. The serial clock will be connected to the serial clock of the peak microcontroller. The SI pin will be connected to SDO pin of the microcontroller and this SO pin will be connected to SDI pin of the microcontroller. We're gonna connect the chip select pin to RC1 and the reset pin we're gonna connect it to RC0. The ENC28J60 operates a 3.3 volt however it was designed to be easily integrated into 5 volt system so the SPI chip select pin, SI clock pin, as well as the reset pins are all 5 volt tolerant so they can be connected directly to our peak microcontroller. On the other hand, if our peak microcontroller, as in this case, the peak 18A45K22 operates at 5 volt, a unidirectional level translator will be necessary because the SO pin cannot be driven by the microcontroller input pin without a voltage translator. This pin requires 3.3 volt. A 74HCT245 or a similar voltage translator chip can be used. In this simulation, we're just gonna connect it directly, but you must remember whenever you are building your hardware, this pin must be driven by 3.3 volt two leds can be connected to led a and led b to provide visual indication of the link and the activity on the ethernet line gonna use a green led for led a and a yellow led for led b The internal analog circuitry of the ENC28J60 
requires that an external resistor be connected from pin RB IAS to ground and an external filtering capacitor should be connected from VC cap to ground. VSS PLL should be connected to ground, VSS TX, VSS RX, and VSS OSC. Gonna need a 3.3 volt supply for our chip. Connected to VDD OSC, VDD RX. VDD TX and VDD PLL. The transmit output pins TP out plus and TP out minus and the receive input TP in plus and TP in minus should be connected to an RJ45 network socket with an integrated Ethernet transformer. They are not shown in this simulation. So guys, this is the circuit diagram of our project. In part two, we're gonna continue with the code. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to receive more tutorials in the future. And I'll see you guys in part two. Thank you.